Hey everyone, me again. So here in England it started raining again and that pretty much means that autumn has begun. I don't know about you guys but over the summer I got so bored of not being able to do like a full face of makeup because obviously the more makeup you wear the more it's just going to get really uncomfortable in the hot weather and start sweating and ooh. So as soon as it started to get a bit colder I was really excited to just rummage through my makeup collection, crack out all of my darker eyeshadow palettes, my glitters, all my warm tones, you name it. And this is what I've ended up creating today. It it's a smoky rose gold eye with a base that's somewhere between dewy and satin. So the main focus is on the eyes and I'm going to talk you through everything. All the products that I use today are affordable as always, that's just what I do. So I just used the chocolate cherry palette which you'll have seen on my channel a few times by now and I also tried this glitter thingy from AliExpress and you'll see how that went later on. Anyway I'm going to stop rambling on and just get to the video. If you do enjoy this while you're watching then feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. So I'm going to start with my eyes just because I plan on using a bit of glitter. Obviously I don't want it to like fall down my face and get all mixed up in my foundation. So yeah, I'm going to start with that. I'm going to do my eyebrows first. I won't spend too much time going over my eyebrow routine just because it's very similar if not exactly the same in every single video I upload. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Revolution Brow Pomade in the shade Blonde. And then I'll probably go in with the NYX micro brow pencil in taupe, just in any little gaps. And then I'll set them in place. Just using one of these, depending on how bold they're looking at that point. I imagine I'll probably just use this clear mascara from collection to set them because if they've got the brow pomade and the micro brow pencil, then I don't think I'll need any extra color. So yeah, I think I'll probably just set them with this. And then we'll start with the eyes, which will be a lot more exciting. Okay, now that's the boring bit over, let's go on to my eyes. So recently I've been using the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer to prime up my eyelids and sometimes to like kind of tidy up the eyebrows a bit and carve them out if I've, you know, done a bit of a messy job. So I'm just going to chuck some of this on. This is the shade C0.2. So I tend to start off with a really slim brush, just when I'm carving out my eyebrows, and then I pack everything on with a slightly bigger brush just to go over the lid and fuse it out a little bit. So I know my eyebrows don't look 100% even, but I think they're about as even as they're going to get. Anyway, I'm going to throw some eyeshadow on now, and I'm going to be using the I Heart Revolution Chocolate Cherry Palette. I've got a full video review on this if you're interested in seeing swatches and stuff. This is like one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes in my collection. It's just got a really good range of colors. There's some pinks, there's some purples, and there's the rose gold tones as well. It's basically everything that I kind of gravitate towards all in one palette. And I thought it would be absolutely perfect for this look. So I'm going to use this. I'm just going to take this matte shade called Spring and I'm going to use this to set my eyelids. I know that a lot of people don't set their eyelids anymore and they just go straight in with eyeshadow because it looks more pigmented, etc. And I did try that for a little while, but honestly, I just didn't feel like it was blending as well as when I set my eyeshadow. Plus I've got like hooded eyes as well, as you can clearly see. And I just felt like it was creasing a little bit more if I wasn't setting it. Another good thing about um, setting my eyelids is that it just gives me a little bit of extra coverage from the powder which is good because I've got a lot of redness and veins on my eyelids. So in my head, I'm kind of picturing a sort of pink, bronze, rose, gold kind of look. And I'm thinking I'm going to start out with the shade Pear over here. This is a really nice transition color. It's actually the one I use most of the time. It kind of goes with everything. I am taking my eyeshadow quite high. That's just because there's not a lot of space, like in this general area. When I'm doing an eye look that's a little bit more extra than normal, I do tend to smoke it out quite a bit. Next, I'm taking the shade Black Forest, and I'm just going to use a little bit of that on the outer third of my eyelid. And a little bit up into the crease. Now I'm a bit of a vampire, so this is looking smoky enough for me already, but if you have a deeper skin tone, maybe add a little bit more of the darker matte shade here called Dark Chocolate, just to smoke it out even more. 
I can leave it here because I'm freakishly pale. Next I'm going to take the shade Ripe, which is a really beautiful shimmery dark purple. And that's just going to go on the outer parts of the lid. Now I do want to put a liquid glitter all over my eyelid, but I am going to lay down a powder first, just because the liquid glitter that I'm using, it does have a few gaps in it. So I'm going to put the shade Tarte on my lid first. I'm going to apply most of it with my finger. This is a really, really stunning rose gold colour. And then I'm going to use a smaller brush just to tidy up the edges. I'm not doing a cut crease or anything like that because I want this to be a little bit more smoky and a little bit messier and lived in. That's just the mood that I'm in today. It's funny but like sometimes with eyeshadow it just it doesn't really look like it's working out the way you imagined but like as soon as you put on the shimmer shade on the lid it's just like it's all come together. So this is the liquid glitter that I'm using. This is from a brand called You Can Be which you can find on AliExpress. I will link their store in the description box below for you and it's just so cool because you don't need like a glitter glue to use this. It's kind of the glue and all the glitter just shoved in a jar. So I'm just taking a dense brush, packing some of that glitter on, and then I'm just going to go for it. So I'm starting out with one layer on the lid, I'm just putting most of the product in the centre and inner corner and then fusing it out towards the end. And then I'm kind of letting the glitter dry down a little bit between coats so that I can really build it up. But if you're struggling to get your glitter to dry down, try just going in with a little bit more of your shimmer shade and then just putting it down just patting it on the bits that are still a little bit tacky and then it'll be a lot easier to layer the glitter on. And be careful to use a lot of patting motions as well. Sometimes if you kind of like swipe or anything like that, it will kind of disturb the product. And if you're like me and your eyes are a bit hooded, you'll find that as you blink, a little bit of the glitter will just kind of smudge on the crease. I quite like that. I think it kind of softens everything and just makes the whole eye look a lot more sparkly. But obviously if you do want it to be like just on the crease, then just try to not look up while it's drying. I do want to put some eyeliner on as well just to complete the look, but I'm going to have to let the glitter kind of set a little bit before I can do that. So I'm going to go and make a cup of tea while this dries and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have my tea. And I'm just going to check in on the glitter eyeshadow because this is actually the first time that I'm using it. So it does look like it's separated a little bit just where the crease of my eye is. I'll be honest though, because I have hooded eyes, I find that quite a lot of my eye makeup does tend to separate just on the crease anyway. And that's kind of happening more and more the older I get. So I'm just using my smaller brush just to kind of press the product back into the crease and just move everything a little bit. And if I can't fill in the gaps that way, I'm just going to get a bit more of my Tarte shade and then just press it in the gaps. Again, being very careful not to swipe it around. And then for eyeliner, I'm going to use this cheap and cheerful eyeliner pen from Primark. So this is their Tulip Tip Eyeliner. I found this when I was doing my declutter, so I'm quite curious to give it another try. The product still feels quite wet when I swatch it, it still feels in really good condition. And I'm just going to do like a really thin line. I don't think I'm going to do like a massive wing or anything because number one, I'm not very good at it. And number two, again, the hooded eyes. Usually when I do winged eyeliner, it kind of gets lost a bit under my crease or it just looks a little bit weird. So yeah, I'm just going to do a really thin line. And I find the best way to do that is to just get the tip of the eyeliner pen and press it right against the root of the eyelashes and not draw any lines or anything or swipe but just pressing it against the root. That's the best way for me anyway. Next I'm just going to curl my eyelashes using a heated eyelash curler. I find that when I use a clamp eyelash curler it will kind of smudge my eyeliner so I'm just going to use a heated one today and I'm going to wear this mascara that I got from AliExpress. I've been using this a lot recently and I really, really like it. It's £1.20 and it's probably one of the best mascaras I've ever tried. So yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm going to add some false eyelashes as well, so everyone pray for me. I got these on Shop Misse. They are the Cara eyelashes in 110. All right, so we can move on to the base now and I'm going to start off using the Revolution Gold Elixir Rosehip Seed Oil. You can use this as either part of your skincare routine or as a primer. Today I'm using it as a primer. 
Now I am looking a little bit flushed today because it's a little bit warm in here. So I'm just going to take some of the green colour corrector from this Revolution Ultra Base Corrector Palette. I'm just going to dot this around my face. And I'm also going to put a little bit of this peach shade here underneath my eyes. And lately, before I've been putting my foundation on, I've been using a few drops of the Technic Get Gorgeous Liquid Highlighter in the shade Bronze. This is basically a liquid highlighter for deeper skin tones, and what it does is it just kind of warms up my face and adds a nice bit of glow. And I think I still want to do it now, even though we are doing an autumn look today. So I'm just going to get a couple of drops, put that on the back of my hand, and then I like to get a Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and just kind of dab it directly in there. And I'll sort of put that where I would normally apply a bronzer. I'll dab some on the outer perimeters of my face and down my nose and just where my freckles are. And then I'll just blend everything in with the brush. And it looks a little bit crazy at first, but like you just gotta stick with it, trust the process. If you had a deeper skin tone, you could probably mix this directly with your foundation and it would look really, really beautiful. I just obviously have to be like quite careful about bronzer and not going too overboard because I'm so pale. You could also do this after foundation as well if you wanted like a stronger effect. So it looks really intense at first but then once the foundation goes on top, trust me, it all comes together. I'm just taking a little bit down my neck as well because my neck is a lot paler than my face. And then for foundation, I want to mix two together. So recently I've been reaching for a lot of liquid foundations. I did go through a bit of a phase for a while of only liking foundation sticks. And on an everyday basis, they are still definitely my preference just because it's a lot quicker to get done. But I've started reaching for liquid foundations again and honestly, they do kind of fuse with the skin and just look a lot more natural. So when I have the time, I do like to use something more like this. So I'm using an old favourite. This is the Maybelline Dream Satin Liquid Foundation. I'm using the shade 03 True Ivory today. I do have a review using the shade below this, which is 02 Fair Beige. This is the second lightest one. Like in terms of how light it is, it matches me quite well, but it is a little bit yellow as you might be able to see there. So I'm also mixing it with a little bit of the Revlon Colour Stay Foundation in 110 Ivory. This is the one for normal to dry skin. So this is a little bit more satin, so it will kind of stop it looking overly dewy, but it's also quite pink toned. So mixed together, they make a really good kind of neutral undertone, which is what I have. I'm using a little bit more of the Maybelline foundation, just because that one is very like smoothing over dry skin and my skin is a little bit more on the dry side. So I've mixed about two thirds Maybelline and one third Revlon and I'm just going to see how that goes. And I think I'm going to start off with a foundation brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. It's from Primark, it was like a pound or two. You can tell by the state of it that it's very well loved, but honestly, I just really like it. So I'm just going to start out with this and then I'll use a sponge to blend everything in once I've kind of chucked it on. And it's going to look like it's far too light for me at first, but that's just because my face is looking a little bit flushed from the heat. Plus it is going to blend in a bit with the liquid highlighter that I use as a liquid bronzer as well, and that's going to deepen it up a bit and make it look a little bit more golden and sun-kissed. So again, just trust me, it will all come together. That's what I have to keep telling myself whenever I do my makeup. I really love that Maybelline foundation. It's just made my skin look so much smoother. I still have a lot of redness showing though because obviously the Maybelline is a light to medium coverage foundation. The Revlon has a bit more coverage to it, but yeah, I'm still going to need to build this up. So I'm going to take a damp sponge for that. So this is my favorite sponge at the moment. This is the one that you can get from Shop Miss A. It's their Charity Paw Paw Sponge. It's about $1.50 or $1.55. And I really like how soft it is. It applies and blends out so beautifully. Beautifully. The one thing I will say about it though is that maybe don't have it too wet because otherwise it will just absorb product. You do just have to sort of dab a little bit of moisture off with a towel if you can. Anyway, I'm just going to build up this foundation a bit more. All right, my base is looking a lot more even now, but as you can see, I've been joined by a few spots today. So first I'm going to go over my spots with the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer Pomade. 
This is in Zero One Light, and the coverage on this is just incredible. So I like to use really slim brushes to go over my spots. I actually use ones that are designed for eyeliner, like this one from Shop AOA. This is their E117 brush, and using a brush this small just allows me to get like the perfect amount of product. This probably isn't a concealer for my very pale viewers. I can only just about get away with it myself and that's because I use it on such small areas that are quite red. And I also use this concealer with a larger brush, just over smaller patches of redness. And I'm just putting a really small amount just where the darkness is underneath my eyes. And it really just helps to neutralise that entire area. And then I'm going to dot a little bit of the Primark My Perfect Colour Concealer, just in the areas I want to brighten. So it's mostly down the centre of my face. And just towards the edge of my face, where things get a bit red. And then I'll just get my sponge again. So I'm just going to set my face now and I'm going to use the Revolution Skin Finish in the shade Luminescence. A lot of setting powders like just don't agree with dry skin but I obviously really need to set my powder because I use so much foundation and concealer. So yeah, it's really nice to find one that doesn't like make my face look too cakey. That being said though, don't go overboard with this because it will look very, very glowy. Like maybe even a little bit shimmery. Anyway, as I use like a million layers of foundation, I'm just kind of dabbing the powder with my brush. I try not to like move the brush around and buff everything in because that will just move around the layers and layers of foundation and concealer I have. I'm just going to use the Fuck All Your Sculpt Glow to contour. This is the shade 01. And again, I'm just patting the product on instead of like swirling or buffing. And then once it's on, I can kind of buff it a little bit, but not too much. And I've just realized that I need to finish off my eyeshadow as well. So I've just got my palette back out. I'm just going to take this shade Pear, the one that we started off with before, and put that on the lower lash line. And I'm also going to use this really soft matte color here called Almond, just to fuse it out. And kind of join it to the top as well. As always, I'm using the AOA Skinny Mascara on my lower lashes. I want to try this blush today. It's from AliExpress. This is from Focolio. It's their Ultra Light Baked Blush in 06. It's a very pretty, warm-ish colour. It's kind of a rose gold, very similar to the colour that kind of happened on the eyes. So let's give it a try. Okay, it's maybe not the most pigmented blush in the world. Well, there we go, that's better. I'm getting a bit more colour this time. That's very pretty. It's leaving a nice sheen as well. It's very, very glowy. And then I just want to take one of my favourite products. This is the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Stick in the shade Yogurt. This again is a really pretty rose gold colour and I'm just going to put this along my waterline. And I know I use this highlighter all the time and you're probably sick of it. This is the Revolution Girl's Best Friend Diamond Highlighter, but I absolutely really do love it. It is my favourite highlighter at the moment and I want to use it again today, sorry. I'm just going to mix a lighter shade with a little bit of the one in the middle. I'm just going to put that in all the usual places, so the inner corners of my eyes, the brow bone, and then on the cheekbones, above the lip, down the nose, above the brows. And then I've got a few lip options. I don't really know which one I'm going to go for. I want something kind of nude, what a surprise. I think I'm going to go for the Colourpop one. This is in the shade Layover, but it is a bit pigmented. So I'm going to use a lip pencil from Primark first. This is in the shade it says taupe on the label, but it's really not a taupe shade at all. It's like a, it's like a warm nude. And I can't be bothered to sharpen it, so I'm just going to use it like this and hope for the best. Then I'm just going to go over the top with the Colourpop lipstick. This is a really stunning warm nude colour, so I feel like it really complements the rose gold tones on the eyelid and with the blush as well. It kind of just ties everything together. 
And then I just want to set everything in place and I'm using the same setting spray that I use every single time. This is the Revolution Pro Fix Fixing Spray, which I have loved for years. And this is the finished look. I did end up blotting down the lip a little bit, that's just personal preference. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you're new around here, you can feel free to subscribe. I upload videos every Sunday. Recently, I uploaded two videos in a week and I actually really enjoyed doing that. I'm going to try and upload an extra video as often as I can, but I'm not going to commit to doing two a week every week just yet because I'm freelance and I don't really know what that's going to be like with my work schedule. But for now, let's just say that I upload every Sunday at 9am and occasionally I will upload on Wednesday at 9am as well. I also have a blog, the link to that is down below and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!